Governor, it's great to have you here. And uh, congratulations to Texas getting back in business. I think people are ready, aren't they? Well, uh, people are ready. Listen, people are, are tired of the lockdown. Uh, people need to get back to normal, but uh, people are tired of the unemployment lines. Uh, they want to go out and earn a paycheck. They want to pay their bills. You know, here's one thing about Texans, uh, and that is they're not looking for a handout from government. They just want to go back to work. Uh, and so part of this is allowing Texans to return to the jobs they love and give them the ability to put food on their tables. The other part is allowing people to have that sense of normalcy, whether it be going to bingo halls or, or restaurants or whatever the case may be, but also we're opening up youth sports camps, the, the kinds of things that are so important to these families where Little League Baseball is going to come back in the state of Texas and uh, these other sports that get to play and, and the summer camps that kids get to go to. Uh, there is this uh, almost urgency uh, for people to get back to a sense of normalcy. However, Governor, as you know, uh, we have to continue to do this in ways that maintain safe health practices. I think that's an important point to make, Governor, is that this isn't some reckless opening up where everybody goes back to doing business just like they did before. They're, they're safeguards that you're putting into place, but you never lock the state down like New York or California, yet you've had a fraction of the cases of states like that. So why should I be listening to Andrew Cuomo's idea of uh, what we should do instead of listening to you, our Governor DeSantis in Florida? Texas has one of the lowest death rates uh, in the United States of America, and we have the second highest recovery rate. Uh, and so Texans are on the pathway to uh, returning to good health. But again, we're not going to take things like that for granted. We will, uh, we're, we're kind of in a transition period right now. We're, we're in the period where uh, we have been through uh, this uh, distancing practices and things like that, and we need to continue those uh, as we get to the point in time here just a few months from now where we will have these therapeutic drugs that people could take that will be able to treat people who test positive for COVID-19. So uh, our goal is to, as you know, before this happened, Texas was number one in the United States economically for job growth, et cetera. Uh, we want to maintain uh, that economic leading position in our country. And we're doing that as we continue to open up while maintaining these safe practices. You, you've had a lot of people in California move their businesses to Texas. That's been happening for a long time. My guess is that in light of this, uh, you may have to put a gate up just keep people from overwhelming you because I think people are going to be looking to come to states that are business friendly, that don't want to regulate people out of business, that don't want to shut people down, but rather figure out how to open them up. Uh, what are you doing? And then let's use the example of Elon Musk, who said, you know, he, he's just about ready to get out of California, probably to head to Texas. Well, so I've had several conversations with Elon Musk, and obviously, as you have seen from what he said publicly, he is very frustrated with California, but you know, part of that frustration predated uh, the whole pandemic situation, uh, as it has with so many other businesses that are trying to uh, get out of California. But whether it be uh, California or a multitude of other states, despite us going through this pandemic for the past couple of months, during that time period, I have continued to work on economic development. I have received a lot of phone calls from a lot of businesses uh, from across the country that during the course of this pandemic, they want to come here. And let me tell you why. Uh, whether it be in Silicon Valley or New York City in the financial sector, one thing these businesses have realized is they don't need to have these high cost offices in Manhattan or high cost offices uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, they are able to work in, in a distance or a remote way uh, for part of the, their employee base uh, and they can have lower costs with greater efficiencies uh, and better results by coming to Texas and locating in Texas. Governor, the president pretty much let governors manage their own states, which is uh, true to the 10th Amendment. Uh, a lot of people may not recognize how big a deal that was in a policy perspective that the president didn't say, look, I'm going to tell you what you can and can't do. He let you make that decision for the state of Texas. Why was that important uh, for the people of Texas? Now, this is not anything that began with the pandemic. 
This began uh, when the president took the oath of office. Uh, he was clear from day one in his communication with governors uh, that he believed in, in the 10th Amendment, uh, that he was going to empower governors to run their own states. He was going to respect uh, the rightful position under the Constitution that states have. And so it's so refreshing to have a president who understands, who believes in it, and who adheres to uh, the 10th Amendment. And we've seen that play out in this pandemic. Well, and we've seen the successes of governors like you uh, who managed this very thoughtfully and carefully, Governor DeSantis and Governor Kemp and others. Uh, Governor, we're delighted to have you here. Thank you very much, and we hope you continue to have a great story to tell in Texas. Thank you so much. God bless and be safe out there. Our thanks to Texas Governor Greg Abbott. You can keep up with the governor on Twitter at GovAbbott. And be sure to visit the governor's own website at gregabbott.com. 